Hi Rowan class, so this is a, a different way of sharing a, a, a PowerPoint together. Normally we would have this on the big screen and we'd talk through it together, but this seems like a good way of um, doing it. So I get to explain a little bit about it to you as well. So we're going to have a little look at the Isle of Col. Um, the Isle of Col is the place, the real place um, that the author Mary Hedewick used as her inspiration when she was writing the Katie Morag stories. So the Katie Morag stories are all about the Isle of Strewey, um, but actually the Isle of Strewey is not a real place, but it is about the Isle of Col. So it seems like a good place to start to have a look at what the Isle of Col is like. So where is it? The Isle of Col is in the Argyle and Butte area of northwest Scotland. So if you can see here, here's Scotland um, at the top of the British Isles. England is further down. And over on the left hand side, you can see the Isle of Col. And there's a, a, a bit more of a um, zoomed in picture of what the Isle of Col looks like. It belongs to a group of islands called the Hebrides. Now, I wonder if you can remember when we were talking about St Lucia, what that group of islands was called. Can you remember? Now, we know it was in the Caribbean Sea and that group of islands was actually called the Windward Islands. OK, but this is the group of islands is the Hebrides and Col is part of the Inner Hebrides. Now, the author Mary Hedwick used to live on the Isle of Col. Living there inspired her to write stories for children. She used her experiences to help her to create a fictional island for her stories called the Isle of Struy. Now, how do you get to Col? Because obviously it's an island. So how would you get there, do you think? Can you remember how people would get to St Lucia? Can you remember those features of St Lucia? I wonder if you can remember. Well, let's have a look about the Isle of Col. There are two main ways to get to the Isle of Col. The first way is by getting a ferry, a large boat that contains lots of people um, from Oban, which takes around two hours and 45 minutes. The ferry has a car deck at the bottom of the boat so people can take their cars on and off the island. The ferry travels up the Sound of Mull and out into the Atlantic Ocean before reaching Col. This might be a good opportunity for you to just quickly remember those five oceans. So there's Atlantic, one of them. Can you remember the four others? Maybe you can pause the video here and have a think and perhaps write those down. Did you remember the four other oceans? So we've got the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific, Indian Ocean, Southern Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. Did you remember? Now, in the summer, there is one ferry every day. But in the winter, there are less. I wonder why that might be. Maybe you can have a think about why there would be less ferries arriving in the winter. I wonder what the weather would be. I wonder what it would be like on those ferries going over to the Isle of Col. Maybe that's a reason why there aren't as many ferries in the winter. How else can you get there? Well, the second way is they have an airport. Do you remember when I was saying to you about how do people get to St Lucia? Do you remember that St Lucia has actually got two airports, hasn't it? So you can take a flight to Col from Connell Airport just outside of Oban. The flight often lands in the neighbouring island of Tiri first. The flight takes around an hour. If you're lucky enough to fly directly to Col, it takes around 30 minutes. The aeroplane's very small and takes only eight passengers. There is no cockpit. Can you imagine being in an aeroplane that only has room for eight people? It's like smaller than a bus, isn't it? The views are incredible as you travel over other islands. So because you're not going as far, it's a shorter plane journey. You don't need to go as high. So you'd be able to see all of those Hebrides islands, which would be amazing, wouldn't it? OK, let's continue. So what is there on coal? So now this is about two or three years out of date. So I wonder what it's like there now. But two or three years ago, around 180 people lived there. 
And that's not very many people at all, is it? 180 people. If you think there are more than 180 children in our school, but on one island, there are less people than that. Okay. There is one village called Arinagor, and there is a community centre called Ancrea. Carl has a doctor's surgery with an ambulance, a fire station and a fire engine. He has two shops for food and household goods, so that's where you get all of the things that you need. There's also a post office, so you can send things to the mainland or send things somewhere else, or perhaps to receive things from other places. Um, and there's a second hand shop called Recycle, I like that, and a craft shop called The Art Den. It has 23 beaches. Why has it got so many beaches? Have a look at the island. Can you remember when we were talking about St Lucia and we talked about how many islands there were on St Lucia? Why does an island have more beaches than perhaps, perhaps other places? Why does it have more beaches than where we live? Have a look at that. Maybe pause the video and have a think. So what did you think? Well, maybe it has more beaches because it's got more coastline, hasn't it? Do you remember the coastline is the line where the sea meets the land? And on an island, it's just got more coastline, hasn't it? So I wonder where all those beaches are around here. I wonder if they're sandy beaches. Maybe they've got shingle on them. There's a very small airport, a ferry terminal. Now that's where the ferry comes in and unloads all its passengers and perhaps loads its passengers again. And a helipad. And a helipad is where a helicopter would land. And it has two castles. Strange for somewhere so small that only has one airport to have two castles. I wonder where that would be. It has a very small primary school, one head teacher, and that's not unusual, is it? Two part time teachers. Now, I work part time, don't I? I don't work on a Wednesday. So, a part time teacher is someone who doesn't work every single day of the week. So, they've got two part time teachers. It takes pupils from three years old up to the primary seven age. OK, so in our primary school, we take children up to year, age 11. But this one, only up until the age of seven. So actually up until the end of year two. So you would go to the primary school. But if you're any older, you wouldn't go to the primary school. I wonder where you'd go. From August 2019, there were eight pupils in one class. Now, I wonder how old those children would be then. There's only eight of them. They've got a very small playground and a field to use for their break times. The school has two large rooms. One is a classroom and the other is used as a pre five room. That's all the children who are less than five years old, like nursery children. But all of the other children are in together. And this pre five room for the younger children is also where the pupils and the staff have their lunch. So a bit like when we did on Christmas dinner, everybody has their lunch together. Now, once you get older than seven, you go to the, the secondary school. And this means you have to take an aeroplane and fly to school. Isn't that amazing? You fly there on a Sunday afternoon and then you live there for the entire week. And there are people there, there are staff there to look after you all of the time, day and night, to make sure everything's OK. And then you get home again at the weekend to spend your time with your family. And then Sunday afternoon arrives, time to get back on the plane, go back over to Oban. Strange way, isn't it? Especially only at the age of eight. Now, if there's an emergency, because it's only a small place, didn't mention a hospital, did it? Had a doctor's surgery, but not a hospital. So if you fall poorly, if you're ill and cold, there's a doctor who's available every single hour of the day, every day of the year. Volunteers drive the small ambulance if it is needed. 
OK, so these people who are volunteers are people who are volunteering, who are saying that I will do that, but I don't need to be paid for that. They want to do that. They want to help. Do they want to provide their community with a service? If someone needs to go to the hospital, the doctor arranges for an air ambulance helicopter to take the person off the island. Helicopter lands at the helipad or in a suitable field if possible. If there is a fire, Col has a volunteer fire brigade and a small fire engine. Has a volunteer coast guard as well. And a coast guard is someone who looks after um, people to keep them safe around the coast. Okay, so in the water around the coast. And it's got no police station. Okay, so the police station are over on a different island in Mull, and they can be called upon if they're needed. Now. Here are some facts about Col. It is 13 miles long by three miles wide and its outline looks like a little fish. OK, so actually to drive from one end of Col all the way to the other end of Col, the whole length of the island, it would only take you about 20 minutes, 25 minutes maybe to drive from one end to the other. Not very long at all, is it? I wonder if you can remember how long St Lucia was. It's a bit bigger, only a little bit bigger. It's 33 miles long, OK? Not a lot bigger. Coal used to be ruled by Vikings and a number of settlements have been found. Now, Vikings are um, a group of people who used to live a long time ago. You might know a little bit more about the Vikings than I do. Um, but it shows that actually the Isle of Coal is a very old island, an island where people have been living for a long time. Um, and maybe that explains a little bit about why they've got castles on that island. Now, it didn't have any electricity until the 1970s. Um, now, the 1970s is a long time before you were born, but actually it's only about 50 years ago. Now, 50 years ago, um, lots of the other parts of the country had electricity. So I wonder why the Isle of Col didn't have electricity and I wonder what it did to keep their houses warm. I wonder how they kept um, keep, they were able to see things, wonder what they used for light. Maybe you can have a think about the types of things they would have done. And there's a nice picture of the coastline. Before there were car ferries, cars going to and from the island used to be lifted off the, by, off the island using a small crane and lowered onto a boat. That seems quite a palaver, doesn't it? Mom. Now, at its most, Cole had 1,500 people living there. OK, that's quite a lot. Um, but lots of people actually left Cole to live somewhere else. So there we go. That's a little bit of a, um, a whistle stop tour of the Isle of Cole. What I'll do is I'll also um, put a web address on which is all about the Isle of Cole that you can have a look at and also attach some photos as well. And maybe um, next week we'll have a little bit of a delve into what the island is like itself. OK. OK, guys. Bye.